yesterday we discussed kubera the elder brother of ravan seeing the ravana's adharmic atrocities he felt compassionate upon his younger brother out of compassion he wanted to give some good advice so he sends his uh, messenger and ravan was enraged his ahankar his ego was hurt by hearing the words of kubera through his messenger and he kills he attacks he kills the messenger in a most abominable way and after that he goes he attacks northern direction all the yakshas do they they are under kubera and he defeats them and he captures pushpaka vimana and from that pushpaka vimana he is uh, declaring war he is traveling everywhere and that is where he comes near sharavana parvata he that is on himalayas and uh, kaila part of kailasa range and his pushpaka vimana doesn't move from there and ravan becomes very angry why this pushpaka is not moving so he becomes so angry he says i will i will pluck i will remove this pushpaka vimana from my way sorry remove kailasa parvata from my way and he tries to lift the kailasa parvata and he wanted to throw kailasa parvata so that is when lord shiva pressed kailasa parvat little bit and ravan's 20 arms got stuck and he was crying for 1000 years because he cried for 1000 years and offered prayers to lord shiva lord shiva gave him the name ravana rava means the one who cries in a very very terrible way ravana means one who cried for long time he was making everyone cry but he himself was crying now and how he cried when he cried people from nakshatra mandala fell down the earth started trembling in such terrible way he was crying tears was rolling and uh, you know and he had 10 faces 10 heads and from all the 10 mouths he was crying right so like that he received the name ravana from lord shiva he also received a special weapon pashupatastra or shakti uh, astra and also the chandrahasa khadga from uh, lord shiva and then after that what did he do he was still going and then he attacked a king called marutta who was doing yagna and then uh, so because marutta was sitting with yagna diksha so he cannot fight with ravan so and marutta's guru told that please don't fight now that is not recommended for you when you are about to finish this yagna so marutta said okay i will not fight and uh, so for that reason i'll accept defeat and ravana felt that everyone is accept accepting defeat and then from there he was going then he saw one beautiful tapaswini who was doing tapasya uh, wearing deer skin with matted hair and all that and he goes and ask her she says that she was born from the father called kushadhvaja who is the son of brahaspati when they were chanting the vedic mantra so her name is vedavati and the father kushadhvaja he wanted lord narayana to marry his daughter vedavati that is why nagas suparnas yaksha rakshas vidyadharas deva dainya daityas when they all came and requested kushadhvaja that we wish to marry your daughter he did not agree he said no only lord narayan vishnu i want i my desire is lord vishnu should marry my daughter so one of the rakshasa called shumbhu he got angry when kushadhvaja was sleeping he comes and kills him and uh, so in that way uh, vedavati has become orphan she is doing tapasya in this uh, one of the mountains in himalayas and that is where this ravana has come so ravana forces vedavati to marry ravan and vedavati he tries to touch her he touches her hair and uh, so vedavati immediately she transforms one of her hands into a sharp knife 
and cuts that hair which he had touched and she creates the agni from her yoga shakti and she says that you have polluted me by touching my hair in this way i cannot now approach lord narayana so you have disturbed me my tapasya and you have looked at me with your lusty desire so i will enter into fire i'll give up this body and i will once again appear and i will become the cause of your death and that is same vedavati who is actually mahalakshmi's incarnation appeared as sita devi and her father kushadvaja appeared as janaka maharaj so we heard till here yesterday how uh, ravan received the curse from vedavati that she will be the cause of his death so now ravan is not bothered from all this shapas so he is thinking that is very great so his ego uh, with his ego he likes to go and defeat more and more people he likes to hear everyone telling that ravan is great ravan is great dashagriva is great we are defeated we are defeated like this he likes to hear from everyone so what he is doing he is going on declaring war with all anybody comes and tells him there is one very big king very powerful king he will immediately go and attack them he will invite them for war you have to fight with me either you have to fight with me get killed by me or you accept that you are defeated by me then i will spare you so because ravan was there during the end of satya yuga right so he lived for very long time he lived for many many uh, thousands of years lakhs of years he lived so there were many kings great great kings appearing meanwhile so he was going and attacking like great kings like gadi gaya dushyanta like this are many great kings so he will go and declare war on them so some of the kings were very wise and practical so they knew that he has got brahmavara the blessings from lord brahma so he is very powerful because of the brahmavara we cannot attack him even though they are all very powerful kshatriyas but this he has got special power, power from lord brahma secondly our city will be destroyed the citizens will be put into trouble and all these things so some of the kings out of the concern for citizens and the soldier so they said okay we are defeated by you so like that so ravan the ego was increasing day by day day by day any information anybody comes and tells him so here is one powerful person he wants to go defeat that person so that he will remain always powerful person so these are all the symptoms of a person who is mad after power was mad after you know name fame recognition like that so in this way uh, his uh, servants came and told him there is one king called anaranya anaranya raja he is in ayodhya so this is happening many many generation before lord ram came so this king is very powerful he is a king in ayodhya ikshvaku vamsha immediately ravan he went and attacked ayodhya and he invited that raja anaranya oh i heard you are a very big king come attack me let's fight so anaranya he is coming in the ikshvaku dynasty he is he will never say no especially when somebody attacks like that so and at the same time this uh, anaranya raja knew that he will not be able to defeat ravan because ravan is now has got that special blessings from lord brahma that nobody can defeat him so but even then anaranya to he he said i will fight with you so he was fighting as a kshatriya dharma and uh, so he was fighting and ravan was uh, creating so much trouble and he was killing lakhs of soldier and attacking this king and he asked that king you foolish king you know you will die even then you are uh, you know fighting with me actually what shocked ravan was everywhere he was going and everywhere people were accepting yes yes you are only great you are only great and they were not fight so when this anaranya raja ayodhya raja when he said i will fight with you his ego got hurt oh you know instead of uh, immediately accepting that uh, ravan is great so they are saying they will fight and not only that they, when they were fighting even though they know see ravan observed one more thing not only that ayodhya raja is fighting 
all the soldiers they are also fighting they are not scared they know they will all die because ravan nobody can kill him ravan now even though they know that they are going to die they are not afraid of death this insulted and humiliated ravana's ahankar he wants to see bhaya fear on their face you know this kind of people they want to see people should be scared of them then only their ego will be satisfied but what is hurting ravana's ego is that they are not scared they neither they are scared nor they are worried of death they are happily fighting they are saying yes we are happy we will die but we will fight with you like that so this hurt ravana's ego so he was fighting and then he asked this uh, king anaranya see how you are fighting don't you know you will die he said that you are nobody to kill me my kala my mrityu is the one which will which can actually kill me you are nobody to kill me and then finally ravana uses his powerful weapon and attacks the king and the king feel so bad that till now nobody ever defeated any king in ayodhya it's so sad that i am getting defeated by this ravan and he says that i will give you on sharp he tells to ravan the anaranya says you are defeating ikshvaku vamsha today a same one one king will appear in the same ikshvaku vamsha and that same king will come and defeat you and he will kill you this is my shop and anaranya says if i have done yagnas sincerely if i have done daan sincerely if i have taken care of my citizens very sincerely if i have done prayers sincerely if i have done tapasya sincerely if i have done my duty sincerely my words will come true what is my word a king will appear in ikshvaku dynasty from ayodhya a raja will come he will defeat you he will take this apaman revenge and he will teach you a lesson so this is anaranya's shrap so this is the second shrap that ravan got so ravan now again goes on now after this incident narada muni becomes very concerned because ravan is continuously going everywhere everyone is tired of either war or death murder nobody is living peaceful on the bhulok earthly planet and ravan continuously keeping everyone busy you know sometimes we get to see how there is this israel and hamas war or some ukraine and russia as war no matter who is right who is wrong but so many people get affected so narad muni becomes very compassionate he becomes very uh, you know uh, his heart melts by seeing this situation so one day narad muni when ravan is going he appears there and uh, so he says oh ravana ravana stop stop like that so uh, ravana stops he says who are you he says that uh, narad muni says i am narad muni and i am so happy to see you my dear ravana narad muni says <laughs> so ravana says uh, why he says that you see so far only lord vishnu makes my heart very happy by defeating everyone now you have defeated everyone so you have made my heart very happy so narad muni narad muni knows is very ahankari he doesn't listen to anyone unless you speak in a particular way he doesn't listen to anyone so narad muni has some you know purpose to achieve so he says he only no, vishnu narayana used to make me happy by always defeating all the people but you have defeated everyone so you i made my happy so now ravana becomes very happy oh he has he has compared me and he, he has equated me with narayana or oh, this person is very nice person like that ravana <laughs> says yes yes tell me what do you want so narad muni says if you wish i want to tell you few things narad narad muni is saying like this Ra ravana says yeah please tell me fast what do you want to tell so narad muni says see i came to know you are continuously going and attacking this human beings i just wanted to tell you i heard some very great things about you but i am not understanding why are you keep attacking this human beings these human beings don't require anybody attacking them they are already suffering they are already dying they already have mrityu already have disease already a old age and they all and uh, narad muni says have you ever seen any animal committing suicide no 
Have you heard any devatas committing suicide? Gandharvas committing suicide? Nagas? Yaksha? No. But you see these human beings keep committing suicide. They are already so small and they have so much dukkha. They already go through so many troubles. They have this uh, hunger. They have uh, nidra. They have sleep. They have their body pain. They have emotional pain. And uh, sometimes uh, they commit suicide. Sometimes like this. They have so many. And the death is there like this. Uh, the world is already created. Why are you going and uh, you know attacking them? This is not befitting for you. Actually, Narada Muni wants to stop Ravan attacking uh, Manishas because there was so much of disturbance in the Bhuloka. If at all you think you are very great, you know whom you should attack. Who is everybody afraid of? Who is everybody afraid of that this, all this uh, manavas, this uh, human beings, they're afraid of what? They're afraid of death. The death is controlled by whom? Yamaraj. So if at all you're powerful, go, go to Yamalok and you have war there. Why are you going to this Bulok and having wars? And then Ravana says, such a brilliant idea. <laughs> <laughs> and he turns towards all his uh, chelas, right? Prahashta, Akampana, Vikata, Yagnakopa, Vajramushti, right? Matta, Unmatta, all these people say, you never gave me this advice, right? See, yeah, we were simply wasting our time with all this, uh, you know, some creatures called human beings. We should go attack big, big people. He says, now only we will go. So, Ravana attacks Samyamani Puri. That is a place where Yamaraj lives. Samyamani Puri. And when he enters, he sees various types of Naraka. Raurava Naraka. Kumbhi Paka. Like this. And he sees how different, different people are suffering in different, different hells. There is so much of description. There are some trees in Naraka, in hell. When the leaf the leaf patta, when it leaves, it cuts the body into pieces. That kind of sharp leaves they are. You see, when the leaf falls on us, nothing happens here. Any tree, right? We sit under tree, some leaf fall, nothing happens. But in Naraka, there are some special trees. The leaf falls and your body can be cut into pieces. That kind of sharp leaves like that. He is watching all that and finally declares war. And Yamadutas come. In the history of uh, Yama, Yamaloka, nobody has ever attacked Yamaloka. I mean, can you imagine? It's Yamaloka, Yamaraj, Yamadutas are the one who attack everywhere. <laughs> the death attacks everyone. So here first, they just of all, they are just not able to understand. How come somebody can enter like this and attack our place? Right? And then Yamaduta start fighting and they, that was a, it's not an easy battle for Ravan. So this uh, war goes on and finally Yama himself comes, Yamaraj. And it's, it's very elaborately described how Yamaraj attacks Ravan and Ravan attacks Yamaraj. So Ravan has the Brahmavara. At the same time, Yama has Kala Danda, Mrityu Danda. Nobody can escape from that Mrityu Danda. That is also given by Brahma only. So finally Yama decides to use that Mrityu Danda. If he uses that Mrityu Danda, then nobody can escape. At that time Brahma appears in the sky. He is visible only to Yamaraj. He says, Yamaraj, please don't use this Mrityu Danda. Because I have given blessings to Ravan. My words should not go wrong. That my blessing is that no devatas will defeat you. And you are a devata. As a devata, you have to obey my now my order. That no devatas will... With your mrityu danda, you are capable of defeating this Ravan. But to make my words true, you should not attack Ravan with mrityu danda. So Yamaraj immediately offers namaskar to Brahma and says, I will honor your words. And Yamaraj just disappears from the war. And now Ravana becomes very happy. Oh, out of fear for me, <laughs> Yama disappeared. All his people disappeared. See, I defeated Yama. I defeated Yama like this. He is shouting. So, you know, he is celebrating like this. So, in this way, now from uh, Samyamani Puri, he is going, uh, next uh, he attacks different, different places. So, there is one separate chapter. What he used to do, he, wherever he goes, 
first thing he will do is uh, attack the people there and take away the women from that place he goes to yakshaloka all the yakshinis he will kidnap some of the women there with their husband so he will kill their husband and he will uh, he'll take them and put them into pushpaka vimana some uh, women are feeding milk to their children babies and he will take that baby and crush them to death and he will kidnap those women put them into their pushpaka vimana and some of them are doing the seva to their father and mother and he will kill their old father and mother and take this woman and he forcefully put them into pushpaka vimana and some of the rishi rishi kumaris and rishi patnis they are taking bath in the river and he will go and kidnap them and some of them are uh, arranging some yagna and all that he will destroy that yagna and kidnap them like the so many women he has put them into pushpaka vimana because pushpaka vimana can accommodate so many people and it is said that that the, the women in the pushpaka vimana they are crying with so much of sorrow so much of sadness they are they are not understanding they are feeling so bad about themselves some of them are remembering oh my child i i he took he he dragged me from my child i don't know now what happened to my child who will take care of my child some of them are thinking oh my husband what happened to my husband what did ravan did to my husband i don't know some of them are thinking who will now take care of my parents some of them are thinking oh that i was supposed to help my sage husband so they are all feeling bad they are crying and when they are all crying this ravan is coming to them and he is talking to them he is he is looking at them oh you, your eyes are very beautiful they are crying and he's telling them that your eyes are very beautiful and they are saying that are you don't you see our tears he said why why are you crying why are you wasting your time and i will not be able to describe the words that ravan uses even though it is there because it's it's censored words and he talks so badly to all the women not caring for what they are going through they are crying they are feeling bad they are they are falling at his feet and they are requesting please leave us and he is holding them he is touching them inappropriately he is talking to them in a very offensive manner he is just not moved by their feelings their pitiable condition and uh, so in this way uh, he is being so insensitive to them and uh, he is uh, talking all kinds of illicit words with them he is not just not bothered that uh, you know what feeling they are going through and in the, what happens all those women the rishi patnis and uh, those uh, yakshinis uh, danavis and uh, many people are from uh, uh, you know gandharvis and nagapatnis all of them and some of them are feeling we don't know when how long we have to be harassed by this ravan how long we have to be alive oh god oh god of death oh mrityu devata why don't you please kill us why don't you make us die today the women are praying like this we want to die we don't want to be with this ravan he's harassing us he's in a very brutal way behaving with them so they are saying death is better how can we die like this they are all thinking praying and all this thing and they all give shapa they all give curse to this ravan they say that you are making us go through so much of pain like this next time your death will be when you kidnap any woman like this that's how you will die your death will come how by kidnapping a woman like the way you have done with us you kidnapped us and we are going through so much pain so much suffering you put us into that kind of tribulation so your death will come if you kidnap any woman see how ravana's future is getting ready right who gave vedavati gave shap she said i will be the cause of your death and next anaranya the raja anaranya said you have insulted ayodhya's pride we have never come and disturbed you right we have never uh, came and gave any trouble to lanka our uh, problem to lanka you unnecessarily came attacked us created trouble for us and killing a raja of ayodhya so a raja from ayodhya only will come and kill you that is the second shaw 
Now this all the spativratas, they are all great women. So all the spativratas, they are sharp. That another pativrata, if you kidnap, that is how you will die. Ravan is anyway not bothered. Right? So now at this point, we have to ask ourselves one question. When these pativratas are going through so much difficulty like this, why, where is God? Why God is not coming and protecting? They are going through so much pain, suffering, right? Why there God did not come and protect? The Shastra gives answer. There are many uh, reasons. One is that they did not offer prayers to God to come and protect them. They were crying. They were feeling bad. They were praying to Yamaraj to come and uh, take away their life. But they did not offer prayers to Supreme Lord, please come and protect. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Ananyas chintayanto maam ye jana pariyupasate tesham nityabhi yukta naam yogakshemam vaham yaham. I will always take care of my devotees if they ask for my help. Even in the Draupadi's case also, Krishna did not come till she called Krishna. Krishna did not come when Dushyasana was dragging her. Krishna should have come. She was being dragged in a very bad manner. God did not come. Why? Because she was not calling for God's help at that time. When they were trying to disrobe her in the beginning, Krishna did not come. Krishna came when Draupadi started calling, Govinda, Damodara, Madhava, He Sakha, He Krishna, please come, please protect me. Immediately Krishna came and protected. So the lesson that we have to learn is, whenever we are in difficulties, we should, we should offer our prayers to the Lord. We should pray to the Lord. The offering prayers, surrendering to the Lord. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Machitta Sarva Durgani Mat Prasada Tarishyasi. If you surrender unto me, by my grace, you will overcome. If you surrender unto me, we have to surrender to God. Surrendering to God means first is offering prayers. If you don't know any prayers, you have to simply chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama. Just keep chanting, keep chanting one mala, two mala. You don't know anything, just keep chanting. Krishna, I belong to you. Please protect me. Take care of me. I don't know anyone. What is the meaning of prayer? Not that, no, no, my husband is there. My son is there. <laughs> my bank balance is there. No. The way Prahalat Maharaj offered prayers. What is that? Manye dana abhijana rupa tapa shruta ujaha. He said dana abhijana rupa tapa shruta oja teja buddhi prabhava bala paurusha. None of these things can save. They did not protect my father. Bhaktya tutosha bhagavan gajayutha paya. Bhakti protected that gajendra. Which my father did not have. But he had all other things. Dana, Rupa, Tapa, Abhi, Jana, all those things, but they could not protect. So, we should not offer prayers. Yeah, yeah, I am offering prayers, but at the same time, I'll say, how much is my bank balance also? <laughs> no, like this, this is not to surrender. We should tell Krishna, Krishna, my bank balance will not save me. My health will not save me. My property will not save me. My job will not save me. My relatives will not save me. Even Krishna did not come and help that elephant Gajendra. To when, when, when the fighting was going on, Krishna didn't come. When that elephant was crying, when the elephant called, Om Namo Bhagavate Tasmai Yata Yutat. You know, like this, he offered prayers, then Narayana came. When you call, Krishna comes. So we have to call. So we have to call. So this Pativratas, they did not call. That is number one reason. Number two reason is why they were in that kind of a situation. Why were they first of all put into this kind of a suffering? The Shastra says, why somebody go through this kind of a suffering? What is that they are undergoing? They are undergoing a karma reaction called go, somebody... Uh, you know, it is a, somebody sexually committing atrocity on you. 
Why are they going through this kind of things? So that's a karma reaction. In your purva janma, if you commit a similar offense on a woman, that means like one example, the example given is, there was, this is a real, real life example. So there was one woman, uh, her husband, uh, for some reason he died. So uh, her mother-in-law, so she was forcing this woman that you should go and you should satisfy my second son, even though that second son is already married. So this, uh, she's a woman, she's a mother-in-law, she's supposed to protect this woman. Instead of that, she's committing atrocity. So karma phala of such crime is that you will be put into this kind of situation where some predator, when offender will come, so he will commit offense on you. So it's first of all our karma phala. Second one is we have to offer prayers. Third one is Ravana's papa, his sin capacity has not yet reached. He has to score 100 points. Right? He has to commit all kinds of offense. Isn't it? Like uh, sometimes you can be keep breaking the traffic signal and thinking that, oh, I'm not getting any punishment. <laughs> right? So one day we were going uh, uh, in a taxi. Suddenly one uh, traffic police stopped it. And he said, uh, today I, I mean, he was thinking I have not done anything wrong. So they opened some long uh, chalan and they gave he said, you have to pay some three and a half thousand rupees, you know, some ten times. You have. So, till it reaches some point, sometimes you may not be held and given some uh, punishment. So, Ravana, so he is accumulating his papa. This is all pap. It is not that, oh, this, uh, all these pativartas, there, some purva karma is there. That is why, the, that is their separate thing. But what Ravana is doing is unacceptable. Wherever he declares war, first thing he will do is he will take away all the women. And he will commit so many atrocities against them. So in this way, he is going everywhere. Right? Uh, so then after that, he, he goes and he attacks uh, Nagaloka. So he says, now Yamaloka is over. Now let me go to Patala Lokas where Nagas are residing. So he goes to a place called Bhogavati. Bhogavati is a place where Nagas live. That is where this uh, Vasuki stays. And very easily he defeats them. And there are big, big Nagas. One head snakes and hundreds of head snakes, thousands of head snakes. Each snake is very powerful. People, human beings, simply snake means they already faint. <laughs> Some people they get a heart attack. So Ravana is not afraid. And there are some snakes from their mouth when they, when they open their mouth, fire comes, right? S poison comes, fire comes. With all of them, he fights and he defeats them. So he defeats the Nagas also. Yakshas, Nagas. And then from there, he goes to a place called uh, uh, Manimaya, where another type of Rakshasa is called Nivata Kavachas. There are three crores of uh, Rakshasas, Daityas. They are called Nivata Kavacha. They also did tapasya to Lord Brahma and got a similar blessing that they will not be defeated by anybody. Uh, so like that. So Ravan goes and attacks them. And uh, so the war goes on. They are also blessed by Brahmaji. Ravan is also blessed by Brahmaji. So Brahma comes, intervenes and stops the war. Nobody can defeat anyone. Better both of you make friendship. So both of become friends. And so they give... Uh, um, Atitya, hospitality to Ravan. Now that you have become friend, come. So what kind of hospitality they give? They, they go and kidnap more and more women and bring and give to Ravana. This is the way this uh, Nivata Kavachas are giving hospitality to Ravan. Because that's what he wants everywhere. And then from there, he's going to an another place called Kalakeyas. There are another types of Daityas, Kalakeyas. So there he goes and uh, fights with them. This Kala Kayas uh, is one type of group where Shurparnaka's husband, Vidyut Jihva, is, is one of the Kala Kayas. So he has gone and declared war against them also. So he's fighting, fighting, fighting. He's so intoxicated with his victory and all that. And he kills that Vidyut Jihva, Shurparnaka's husband also. See these Rakshasas. 
See, they were, for them, their ahankara is important. This pride is important. See, he only killed Shurparnaka's husband. Sometimes some people say, this Ravana, why he kidnapped Sita? Because he was so uh, worried about his uh, Shurparnaka. Because uh, Shurparnaka was insulted uh, by Ram and Lakshman. The, that is why he loves his uh, sister so much. To take revenge for his sister, he kidnapped. So if he really loves his sister so much, why did he kill his sister's husband? Why did he kill this Vidyut Jikva who is a Kalakeya in the war? And when Shurpanaka comes and cries, she becomes so angry that you have killed my husband, Vidyut Jikva. She, he says, don't cry, don't make too much drama. What do you want? And he says that uh, go the Dandakaranya forest and you pick up whomever you want and marry whomever you want. I will give you some 14,000 uh, powerful Rakshasas. They will be with you. They will assist you like that. And she also agrees and goes. So there is nothing called, uh, you know, some uh, uh, that uh, some Rakhi or some special, uh, you know, that Bhatru Prema, Bhagini Prema like this. So there was one video. One uh, woman was unfortunately speaking. She said, Mujhe Ravan, uh, Ram jaisa pati nahi chahiye mujhe. Mujhe Ravan jaisa bhai chai. Like this, some woman is saying. Just see the Kali Yuga effect. Because she is thinking that uh, Ravan is such a nice bhai that for, for sister's sake, he did so much. Where? You don't know proper Ramayan. He killed sister husband. Without thinking, uh, I don't care, whoever it is. For me, my victory is important. I want... Oh, Ravan has defeated Kala Chaos. Ravan has defeated Niyata Kavachas. Ravan has uh, defeated Nagas. Ravan has uh, defeated Yakshas. So everywhere, everybody should say Ravan has defeated everyone. So this is what he wants. Right? It is not at all true that uh, he was upset with uh, Shurparnaka's insult and all those things. This is all modern theories. Right? And then, uh, so like this everywhere uh, Ravan is going, and uh, any any guess the uh, the size of his army in uh, Mahabharat the war Mahabharat war how many Akshohini uh, war, Akshohini army was there anybody knows eighteen total eighteen so Kauravas they had eleven Akshohini Pandavas had seven Akshohini. One Akshohini means how much? Let us understand. One Akshohini means 21,870 chariots. 21,870 vehicles are chariot. In modern day, it may be some kind of vehicles that are there. And then 21,870 elephants. 21,870 vehicles. 21,870 elephants, 65,610 horses. Horses means there will be one soldier also along with them. So 65,000 horses, 21,870 21, elephants, 21,870 chariots or vehicles, 1 crore, uh, sorry, 1 lakh 9,000 uh, foot soldiers. When you add all these things, it is called one Akshohini. So the number of army that uh, Ravan had at this time, when Ram attacks, I will tell you how much was there. At this time, Ravan had 8.74 crore ratas, wherever he was going for war. With him, 8.74 crore ratas. 8.74 crore elephants, 26.2 crore horses, 44 crores soldiers. This was his army. You can just imagine what kind of army he was maintaining. <laughs> it's not easy, right? So basically he had 4,000 Akshohini Sainya with him at this time. 4,000 Akshohini. 4,000 Akshohini. That Mahabharata that we say had only 18 Akshohini ones. It is, it is no comparison to this uh, Ravana's army like this. 
you should know why it is important to know the so called 4000 akshohini sainya was decimated defeated by vanaras isn't it ram if you remember valmiki was asking mahaviryo one of the quality the hero should be very powerful how powerful ram is he comes and defeats the army that has got 4000 akshohini sainya in fact actually this 4000 akshohini sainya by the time ram comes it comes uh, 30000 mahauga akshohini it is not 30000 akshohini there is an another calculation called mahauga mahauga so in some other time i'll explain what is that so even if you go by when ram attacks there were 30000 akshohini army was there so it is around crores and crores of people that's the kind of power that ram had when you simply think of ram 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 you should not think ram is like us like me is maha parakrami such a powerful person right so ravan is going like this everywhere and attacking people with this kind of army defeating everyone and feeling so intoxicated and now the shastra says when you go on increasing your power what increases along with this your power is your sex desire lust it goes on increasing materially when people become materially powerful materially famous materially beautiful materially rich along with that their sex desire also will increase so now how do they want to satisfy now if i'm a very famous beautiful person so the validation of that is how many people are ready to have sex with me if i'm very powerful per- that's why you see all final scandals whoever powerful person the scandals will be somewhere connected to some affairs whether you are a cinema hero or cinema heroine or you are a politician you are a businessman or whatever it is finally this is where it is because krishna says kama is the biggest enemy mahashano mahapapma vidhi enam iha vairinam if you are not careful so called success we come with this great weakness more and more you become famous more and more you achieve success anybody for anybody it is true so ravana is going on you know conquering defeating becoming great 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 along with that his lust is also increasing so what is the meaning of lust more lust means he wants now more women to satisfy him but more women means are they coming out of their own uh, free will no they may be they may not be what he will do he will forcefully bring because this people think like that once they become powerful now they think i don't have to worry about permission i don't have to worry about whether you agree don't agree and all that what i think is enough what i like is enough i don't care whether you agree or not so this becomes their attitude and ravana had this attitude so with this attitude one day now he was uh, going to attack some other place so it it became evening at that time they all had come near kailasa parvata so near that kailasa parvata they were uh, they camped that night so that is a place where this kubera was city was there kubera city so night uh, ravana is staying there and he is he is uh, hearing the some beautiful music going on in that city and uh, the moon in the sky and he is feeling and now since he is uh, far away uh, he is thinking now i want this i want facility to satisfy my lust so his kama has become jagrata that is that is the only thing either he'll attack some king or he will attack some woman these are the only two things that ravan was doing according to this valmiki rama so now that uh, is the war is not happening so now he is thinking now how will i satisfy my kama 
So he like this, he is thinking, and that time he suddenly sees one beautiful woman is walking by. So he is looking at her. She is so mesmerizing, beautiful, and uh, she is so nicely decorated. Her eyes are so attractive. She has got a beautiful, uh, you know, this uh, hair being decorated and all that. And she, he says, oh, she is Rambha. He recognizes she is a apsara called. Ramba, she is fully decorated and she is walking, and he will immediately stop her forcefully. Oh, Ramba, where are you going? So she says that, uh, my dear king, I am going to meet my husband, Nalakuvara, and my husband is waiting for me, Nalakuvara. So I am, I am going to meet him, and then uh, he says, uh, why? There is no requirement to go and meet your husband. I am there. You satisfy me. So like this, in a very inappropriate way, he starts speaking to Ramba. Ramba says, no, please, you should not talk to me like this. I am like your daughter. Ravana starts laughing loudly. First time I am hearing one woman telling me that I am your daughter. <laughs> and for information, let me tell you, I don't have any daughters. I don't consider anybody daughters like that. She says, no, no, my dear Ravana. See, I am the wife of Nalakuvara. Nalakuvara is the son of Kubera. So, I am your daughter-in-law. Nalakuvara is your own. He is the son of Kubera and Kubera is your brother. So, I am your daughter-in-law. It is your responsibility to protect me. It is your responsibility to take care of me. It is not good behavior to approach me like this. It is not good for you to talk to me. I am in your daughter's position. So Ramba tells all those things. So then Ravan is laughing. Oh, come on, what you are speaking. It's fine. It's all right. And then he starts speaking um, illicitly. He starts, starts speaking to her. He says, oh, look at your eyes. And he starts, every parts of Ramba's body, he starts speaking against her desire. She starts objecting, don't talk like this. Don't touch me like this. But forcefully he catches her. He drags her. He tries to remove her cloth. All that he does continuously, she says, don't do this. I request you. I'm like your daughter. And all those things, Ravan is not in the mood to listen. And he finally, he rapes her in, the, in her own place. And Ramba is, is crying and she's feeling so bad. And she gathers herself with whatever cloths she had there. And with so much of tears and all her dresses disarrayed. Here is she runs to the palace of the Nalakuvera. She falls there and she's crying. She's weeping. And the Nalakuvera says, what happened to you? Why are you in this condition? And she says like this on the way, this uh, Ravana stop me and this has happened to me like that. So Kubera, this Nala Kubera, the son of Kubera becomes very silent. He closes his eyes, he enters into dhyana, meditation. He does dhyana for one muhurta. Muhurta is 48 minutes. So he meditates on Lord Brahma. He prays to Lord Brahma. What is this atrocity going on? Nobody is safe. Nobody is able to be, you know, peace of mind. How do we tolerate this? What is going on? So then by doing continuous prayer to Brahma Deva, Nalakuvara gives the very powerful Shapa. He says, from today onwards, if Ravan touches any woman, forces any woman against their permission, his head will burst into pieces and he will die. The moment Kuvera pronounces this Shapa, immediately Brahma from the sky, Satyaloka say, he says, Tathastu, Tathastu. And even Ravana hears this. And first time Ravana's body starts shivering hearing this. His hair standing on the air out of the fear. Because the Brahma approved it. All others were giving Shap. He was not seriously taking it. What they will do? What they can do? But here when Kub Nalakuvera pronounced it, Brahma also approved it. So this Ravana himself tells. There are some uh, so-called Ravan sympathizers and followers in our uh, country, unfortunately. They say, Ravan, do you know? Oh, itna ache admi tha. 
वो सीता को कभी भी फोर्स नहीं किया ही रावण डिड नॉट यू नो डिड नॉट डू एनीथिंग टू सीता इफ ही अकॉर्डिंग टू यू इफ रावण इज बैड देन वाई ही डिट डू एनीथिंग वाई रेस्पेक्टफुली दैट इज एग्जैक्टली रंभा वॉज द लास्ट वुमेन ऑन होम ही अटैक्ट लाइक दिस against their permission so ravan is only telling this in valmiki ramayan he is telling this to akampana do you know why i did not uh, attack sita forcefully because like this rambha gave me curse and brahma has approved it that is why i did not and what did he tell to sita when he brings sita mother sita he tells sita that you see i'll give you one year time and you should agree because he knows that if you don't agree then i cannot do anything so he saying you should agree and if you don't agree ravan says in my kitchen i will cut you into pieces and i will i will eat you in my breakfast see you are saying he did not touch her okay even if you consider that he did not touch her but you are threatening one woman telling her that i will cut you into pieces i will eat you in my breakfast this is not respect for any woman like some people say oh you should agree to marry me and if you don't agree i'll put acid on your face i will i'll kill you so th- then you what is this so ravan belongs to same category if you don't agree i will cut you into pieces so those who do not read ramayan those who do not read shastra they somehow become some kind of supporters of rakshasas in the society and their hero is ravan and they make movie and in that movie the movie name is ravan and in that movie they want they say this movie is to show the good side of ravan if you search entire ramayan there is not even one shloka that speaks good thing about ravan so from where are they getting the good side of ravan at least Ra- valmiki ramayan there is not even one shloka which tells ravan had one good quality <laughs> okay you take that and you make a movie there is no not even one shloka they say we are making a movie this movie is to show the good side of ravana where is the good side what good he did from the birth till the death some people say no 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 ravana so good ram told lakshman go and learn some gyan from ravan it seems <laughs> i mean can you just imagine can you imagine what level of nonsense it is ha huh? it is means those unfortunate people do not read shastra get this kind of uh, tele serial you know some uh, popular narratives they want to create they want to appease everyone so after this incident ravan he it's not that his lust became zero now so what he told he called all the rakshasis rakshasas he told them you should go you should harass the women i will not do that you should force them you should all become specialized either go and talk nice about me tell good things about me if they don't agree you harass them you torture them finally they should say yes we will agree to be enjoyed by ravana and go and keep bringing such women for me like this so uh, that is how even when sita was in ashokavana there were so many rakshasis continuously giving torture to sita agree you should agree to go with ravan like this so right so like this uh, ravan committed all these atrocities and uh, like this he got many many uh, shapas um so like uh, what happened first of all he went to kailasa he laughed at nandishwara and nandishwara gave him shap that you are looking at my face making fun of my face saying that your face looks like monkey so the same monkey like people will come and kill you that is the first shap what is the second shapa vedavati shapa the third shapa is that king anaranya ikshvaku king that the king will from ayodhya will come and kill you what is the next shap of the pativratas they said when you kidnap an another woman you will die and the last shap was this rambha and nalakuvara against any they, without their desire without their permission if you attack any woman if you force yourself upon them that will become the cause of your death 
so these are all this. so ravan was preparing for all this kind of uh, atrocity so after this ravan attacks uh, king indra and he arrest indra and uh, brahma comes and releases indra so like this many more things he performs maybe in another next session we will come to an end of what kind of atrocity ravan was creating that became the reason for all the devatas to go and offer prayers to narayana vishnu to finally appear on the earth and actually kill that is the reason for ramavatar so we'll stop here shri valmiki ramayana ki shri sita ram lakshman hanuman ki shri ram navami maha mahotsav ki jagat guru shri la prabhu pad ki jai